Welcome back, Fud Nation. Fud Nation. Oh, do we have a very exciting update about Tron for you. We have a ton of developments around this project. We were actually gonna start doing a weekly segment, but then the news kind of slowed down around Tron, so we're here to speed it back up, as there's been quite a bit of meaningful progress around the project, and we wanted to sort of dispel a few different sort of competing theories about what's going on with Tron, and sort of put into perspective, again, what really is important, and actually be a little bit critical, even, of some of the developments around Tron, as, to be honest, the testnet release was pretty underwhelming. We're gonna go through the token swap, how that's going to go down, super delegates, which were just announced or super representative, the coin burn and how that's actually going to happen or how it seems like it's going to happen now, given the most recent update around that. We also have the testnet release. And like I said, we're going to be a little bit critical there. We have a developer rewards pool we're going to talk about. And then of course, at the end of the video, we're going to do a swag giveaway. So if you want to win yourself a Tron shirt, brand new Tron shirt, all you have to do is comment below this video and you are automatically entered to win. And at the end of the video, we're going to be giving out uh, the winner from the last video. The token swap will be very easy to handle, and this is essentially converting your current TRX ERC20 tokens into the mainnet TRX that are going to exist in perpetuity as part of the TRX platform. This is happening on June 21st, and as we understand, this is primarily going to happen through exchanges. We don't have any word yet as to whether Ledger is going to support this or whether that's going to be at all any part of the process that's going to be handled with Ledger. Obviously, if you're, hand if you're storing your TRX tokens on an Ethereum address that's on your ledger. We don't know if that's going to be supported yet, but we do know that exchanges, big exchanges like Binance will certainly support it. So make sure that your exchange is supporting the token swap and all you'll have to do is have your TRX tokens in that exchange on June 21st and you should be good to go. Obviously, if you miss that or if you somehow miss this date, it's pretty likely that there will be some kind of conversion mechanism where you can send your tokens in to the Tron sort of network the Tron lab and they will be able to switch your tokens out and it might not be a perfect system but they'll most likely figure out a way to switch your tokens to the mainnet Tron tokens when the time is right. And Tron just announced the existence of super representatives, which are essentially going to be the part of their delegated proof of stake system for achieving consensus. They're there to calculate and provide validation for the blockchain, essentially upholding the computing network. This vote will happen on June 26, 27 super representatives will be selected and they will essentially handle all the transactions and be given all of this incentive for being good actors within the system. A block will be created every second and will hold 32 TRX. Those will all be distributed to the reps. Over 1 billion TRX will be distributed to these reps annually in return for their service. It marks the end of their exodus phase. It's truly phenomenal news to see them moving forward and, and of course putting into practice the system that we know needs to be put into practice to make this work. If you're a super delegate from Tron, you could expect to be paid out pretty fat. Obviously, it's assumed that it's gonna be pretty hard to get a spot as a super delegate as they have so many competitors Competitive companies that are clearly trying to become super delegates. The vote is going down on June 26th, and that is when we're going to be electing essentially our super reps for Tron. Very exciting stuff and shows how this ecosystem is certainly coming to life. And we're going to talk just briefly about the coin burn that's happening on Tron. Of course, this was described initially as like Ripple's mechanism for burning coins, but smarter, and that was by Justin Sun on a live stream. Of course, Justin Sun's uh, public statements are not always well reviewed. But to be honest, this is not what it's seeming like it's gonna be. They've just released an explanation that essentially the coin burn is going to occur whenever apps apply to join the network. When they try to release a coin on Tron, there will be a fee that essentially creates uh, burned coins or burned TRX that can't come back. It's not clear whether they're actually going to be burning with every transaction like Ripple's but smarter. So I'm not sure if that statement still holds. We know for sure there's going to be at least a $1,000 fee for apps that want to join Tron's network, TRX, and those will be burned, all those coins. But it's not clear. There's sort of a competing con theories right now on Reddit as to whether this means that every token that they create will cost a thousand TRX, meaning if they they create a, a thousand or a million tokens, then it would be a billion TRX that it costs and are burned. But then again, that doesn't really make sense because if you burn a billion TRX and you're burning 1% of the monetary supply for launching an ICO, doesn't really make sense. So I don't really follow that logic. It seems like though that the $1,000 fee for just every uh, coin that comes onto the network might be too small. That might be too low. I'm not really sure. It seems like that $1,000 or that 1,000 TRX fee is not going to do much. If there's only, you know, let's just say there's 100, you know, ICOs in the first two years of Tron, 
Well, that would mean that there's only 100,000 Tron that have been burned. People who are heavy into Tron own more Tron than that. So I don't think that's a huge really reduction in supply. Certainly nothing that anyone can feel. So we'll see how this plays out. Obviously, this is just the information we have. And as more comes to light, we'll be sure to share it with you. And finally, we have to talk a little bit about this testnet release. Honestly, I'm gonna be a little bit critical here because I was not a fan of the way this went down. There were at least 10 tweets by Justin Sun about the big, massive, monumental testnet release. And this is totally cool to pump people up to that you're essentially entering into beta. But, but there were some serious issues along the way. The overhyping, right? The constant overhyping, making this event seem like it was going to be huge. People were echoing this news across the internet. Oh, it's the testnet. Oh, it's the testnet. Nobody even knew what the testnet really was going to do. And speaking of which, it doesn't have support for smart contracts. It doesn't have support for D apps. What do we want from Tron? We want smart contracts and D apps so that we can run Gifto and run uh, Baofeng and run uh, Tripio and all these cool partnerships that Tron is making. Well, none of those can be tested or developed yet given this test net. So the real test isn't occurring yet. That's my biggest complaint here is the real test isn't happening. Even though they have a test net up, it is significant. It was just hyping the wrong moment. What people wanna know about is when is Tron happening? When is this going to pop off? And constantly hyping people in early March when your real mainnet doesn't even come out until May, end of May, June. Let's just make clear here, we don't know what that mainnet is going to entail. We don't know what's going to come out with that mainnet if there are going to be any apps or any tokens at all. It might still be a little bit of time before we get that release of a valuable DApp, a valuable service on Tron. So hopefully that happens with the mainnet release, but we don't know that yet. And so for me, one of the biggest issues here here is just the overhyping and the misplaced exuberance. Getting a billboard on the NASDAQ screen in Times Square, that is just overkill when your testnet release doesn't even have a wallet that stretches beyond a command line. Just not that well presented, Justin. Just not that well presented. We needed better presentation. The live stream of Justin in his hotel room, sniffling, no production. After hyping this up for literally over a month and buying a billboard in New York Times Square, it was just very underwhelming. This is becoming a, a case of people are not taking the project seriously because of this boy who cried wolf type thing. Justin Sun is excited. He definitely knows how to stir up excitement around his projects, but he's losing credibility with every sort of misplaced, crazy hype cycle that sends people really confused. It makes people confused because they don't know what to expect. They don't know what to be excited for. I think people should take Justin Sun's Twitter away from him sometimes. He's just not the best tweeter, all right? But I just want you guys to know, you know, I am a Tron supporter, but I will never hold punches. I always tell you guys the real deal of how I feel. And right now I think Tron's Twitter and PR game is just so devastatingly lacking. And despite this underwhelming sort of Twitter behavior by Justin Sun, we have very exciting news that the developer fund from Tron is actually plowing ahead with $2 billion, not just $1 billion, $2 billion in developer rewards. That means that if you're trying to build a D app or try to create a new product or service in the blockchain world, and you're going to go and try to build on Tron, well, you may be eligible for a chunk of this $2 billion for development funding. For those of you who might not be very familiar with how to get projects off the ground in the technology space, traditional sort of venture capital funding is very complex, a dense product. Process. And as the app revolution, the sort of Instagram app revolution swept, well, at first apps were getting funded off of napkin pitches, literally ideas. Oh, I have this idea for this. Okay, cool. Here's 20 million. Go build it. No longer. As soon as more apps started flooding in, the VC world became inundated. And all of a sudden they got to choose from projects that were way further along. So the way it works in the VC world now for technology is you have to have a working product you, you should have traction. You should have users that actually use and, and like and rely upon your, traf your product and you should have revenue. If you have revenue, user base and product, you, you might be thinking, well, why would I even need funding at all? And that's really the question is, once you get to a place where you are almost self-sustaining, well, then you're finally eligible for funding in the traditional sort of VC world. Obviously, some projects get funded earlier than that, but those are anomalies. This developer fund allows, much like EOS's developer fund, for projects who are trying to create new ICOs, who don't have a year to build, test, develop before they can go for real funding. They need funding now, they need to get their projects off the ground now, and they need to move fast. And that's what this sort of industry, blockchain industry world is requiring. That's why developer fund like this is so critical. It's not a small bean sort of thing. This is a fundamental driver of adoption. This is jet fuel for adoption. 
And it is an atypical financing mechanism that we desperately need in the cryptocurrency space. So for that reason, this developer fund is monumental and you cannot underestimate the value of giving out all this money to all these early stage companies in exchange for them building on Tron. Now, as promised, we're about to pick a random comment from the last Tron video, which was on BitGuild and the coverage of BitGuild's entry into the ecosystem. And the winner is Menno Kleindort. Check your YouTube DMs. We'll be sending you information on how to claim your prize. Remember to comment below this video and you too will be entered to win on the very next Tron video. We'll do it the exact same way. Well, that's it for us. We hope you enjoyed our coverage of Tron, their coin board, the token swap, all their Q2 updates, their testnet release, their developer fund, all of the excitement around the project, and some of our minor complaints about the way the project's really being introduced and rolled out. If you enjoyed it, don't be afraid to smash that like button and comment below. Let us know what you thought of this review. Of course, sharing the broadcast is the ultimate form of flattery here on YouTube, and we do very much so appreciate it when you do that. I'm Elio Trades. Please remember, I'm not a professional financial advisor. This is just my opinion, and it's an information and entertainment show, so please always do your own research when investing. If you're an investor and enthusiast in the space, though, it's not a bad idea to subscribe, as we do multiple cryptocurrency videos each and every day. So hit that bell notification if you want to be made aware when we put out the newest and truest in the space. Thanks again. I'm Elio Trades. It's been an absolute pleasure having you with me today on FUD TV, and I'll see you very soon on the next episode.